Hello and welcome into the SoRare Data Football Strategy Show. I'm Andrew Laird. You can find me as Lairdino on SoRare. Joined as always by Sean Newsom, PSU fans too. Today to talk about River Plate, maybe. We're going to talk about how you know your strategies are bad. Sean, somebody, I think it was Isco in somebody's Discord was saying that, oh, no, it wasn't. Us. Somebody was like, oh, you're going to talk about River Plate. And um, we'll get to River Plate as part of maybe bad strategy. Thank you to everybody for joining us. Some of you, let me uh, let me address it this way. I re most people watch these shows after they're live, but we have a really nice dedicated group of people who do catch them live, and I completely screwed those people today. And so, first off, I apologize for that. Uh, Sean and I were talking about uh, rescheduling the show for today because usually we start a few hours earlier, and we were talking about two different times, and I scheduled the show for the earlier time, which was an hour ago, and then tweeted out that it was going to happen right now. And I apologize to everyone who showed up early because of because YouTube told you the time that uh, it was supposed to start. My fault. I messed up. I'm sorry. It's what happens when we let the, the old person in charge of the technology related equipment, right? Just uh, just ends up screwing screwing up and putting everyone into into a tizzy because we're, we're an hour late. I told him actually when we got in here, we should have went on early at 158 so he could just act like we got on early instead. But uh, yeah, no, he still had to be fashionably late even even with uh, the, the hour time gap. Nothing fashionable. I believe we were on time if you don't count the fact that we were an hour late. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Of course, the correct time I put on the, uh, on the website that nobody can use anymore. And so obviously that's, uh, that was just poor, but anyway, my apologies. I'm not going to make it up cause I don't even know how to do it, but, um, we'll see. So Sean, the topic that I wanted to talk about today was, I feel like we discuss a lot of strategies and like ways that you can do things, but we never really go into like how, you know, if they're working because it does seem like there are a lot of people who are like, this is my strategy and this is what I'm going to do. And then like two weeks, it doesn't work. And they're like, all right, it doesn't work. Let's, I'm just going to blow the whole thing up. We have numerous uh, friends who just don't have any patience for seeing if strategies work out. However, I think there's another part of, of the so rare community that employs a strategy and they're just like, no, 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 this will work at some point. And we don't have like an infinite amount of time to find out if these strategies work. So when you are kind of developing a strategy and then you're able to implement it, like what's your time frame of, of thinking like, how long am I going to give this before I know if it works or not? I, I would definitely say that I'm the one that's least likely to change what my strategy is. Would you agree? Like of everyone you talk to, I'm definitely like last. It, it's not so much that about changing strategy as you you seem to have a more realistic approach in terms of like when something should work. Whereas it's like, this is what I want to do. And I know that over the next year or two, like I'll win more than I don't, or, you know, like the strategy will be um, like plus EV over that time frame, whereas other people are like, it's been six game weeks and I, it hasn't worked. But like, so I, I do think that you at least know the the reasonable time frames that something should work and you, yeah. and you work off of that. I, I don't even think it's uh, like people don't even get six weeks. Like, let's be honest, right? Like people do not get six game weeks. Yeah. If they come thing. I think the big key difference, and I think you'll agree with this, is that I think way more beforehand than other, other people do. When That's I fair. come up with a strategy, it's thought out and I'm comfortable going with that strategy. Might not work, might end up being terrible, but like, I mean, as you know, I bought Cherokee Super Rare, Artaguler Super Rare, uh, Doku Super Rare, right? And like, those were big purchases for me. I thought about those for weeks, if not months, before pulling the trigger. And then when I did pull the trigger, or the trigger, I, um, was very quick moving, right? Like I made things happen very fast. Like I got all three of those probably within like a week or two of, or like as soon as I decided I'm going to get it, I got them. 
And I don't mm -hmm. like waste time once I decide to move on something and I go with it. But yeah, that's the thing is people, I'll give a good example. I know that you don't like talking about him because you just don't like talking about him, but Tuggy. Tuggy changed his strategy drastically um, before the season started. And shockingly, he's actually held to it, which blows my mind because I was like, there's no way this is going to happen. But he moved into a – oh, and Tuggy's here. Welcome, Tuggy. Uh, he moved to a um, San Fracky yep. stack. And yes. it hasn't been great. And, and it really hasn't been. Like, they've been not the best. He's won cards with them, though, right? I was going to say he also got – hit with the with an unfortunate injury that or was it two injuries that like really changed that stack it was one and then not has just been horrendous but he not didn't get hurt first well i don't think he's been hurt i think he's just been bench slash terrible because uh he's Maybe. just not I don't, I don't for some reason i thought he was hurt but i could be wrong yeah, so anyways, he, he maybe was, I don't know. But so anyways, Tuggy held held true and didn't hasn't changed it. And he actually was very close to a podium this week. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, uh, it was a very they good actually, line. Yeah, they hit a Rocky with a um with an own goal. So he ended up finishing mm. like I think he's like ninth though. He's still it's still a great week, right? Like he's gonna return, I don't know, point three, point four ETH off off that team that if he if he bought that team today it would be like two to three ETH. So like, that's a good return. So yeah, that's the key, right? Is like, you just, uh, no, there's no Tuggy bashing today, Germ. I'm actually giving Tuggy credit. He, uh, he came up with a plan and stuck to the plan. Like he's ran now, Grant, this plan has changed a little bit and shifted a little bit where he run, ran Diego Valdez instead of, uh, not Suda because not has been horrendous, which is good. Like you should be, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. You should always adjust your plan, right? Like you can make small adjustments to your plan, but and then he bought Cecenia so he could run Cecenia. He already had Cecenia, actually. No, yeah, yeah. So he stopped running Cecenia the Cecenia rookie card, by the way. One of 100. It is. Wow. It's I didn't realize card. that was. Yeah, it's a great card. I didn't even realize he had the number one of Cecenia. But so you, you have a situation where he has stuck to the plan. This variation of it has obviously been tweaked slightly. Uh, but it's worked, right? Like this is, this is the type of return you're expecting with this live and what you're hoping for. And the thing is, is people expect to, to hit every game. It's just not realistic, right? Yeah. Like I, you're going to hit with a lineup a certain amount of the time. And realistically, when you hit with it, you really want to make it count and have it be a high end tier one or a tier zero, because that's obviously where you get your great return out of stuff. So there's different types of plans as well, right? Like this plan by Tuggy was a I want to compete during the summer and hopefully hit some tier ones, tier zeros. Yeah. Clearly that plan is, is yep. working as it's changed. You could have a, a, a plan that's like, I want to focus on cap 240 rare. So I need these eight to 10 players that are going to, that I'm going to be able to cycle through over the course of the year and run in, in cap 240 rare. And so like, there's different types of plans. Like I have different plans for like every level, like D one, I try to stack certain teams. So like this week I got a little burned because Hatanaka didn't start again because who knows what they're doing. But yeah, because who knows? <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, my plan is to typically on a week run a if Marinos have a very good matchup, I run a Marinos and gas one. If they don't, I might run them in Asia D1. Similarly, if I have um a a Philly stack. And if they have a great matchup, I'll run Philly Union stack in D1. And then I don't have a Alice Wilson said Muscat is a moron. So I agree with that. However, I will say he's been less terrible this yeah. year. He's been pretty consistent this year uh, with things. And I've had a lot more success because of that. But the and also like Hatanaka, I knew Hatanaka was a was a somewhat risk this week because he didn't start last week and they played really well. So I knew it was like a partial risk uh, going to this game, but I didn't have any options. And then I don't have a great mid, but I do a great mid within these stacks because they, they just don't really have a great Thanks, mid yeah. per se. So I have Reynoso and I can just sort of plug Reynoso in whatever stack is the best stack in gas one and feel pretty good about it right now. Um, so there's just, there's lots of different plans that you can have. And uh, I'll, this week, for example, one of our favorite discussions is Korean Timber. Korean Timber had another great game this week. And I was originally going to run someone else in uh, U23 Rare Pro. But then I was like, my best goalie is, or I was going to run a different goalie in U23 Rare Pro. I was going to run Chevalier. 
I was going to run Chevalier in U23 or Pro. He's the biggest favorite. He's the best goalie option in my gallery this weekend, U23. But then I was like, Korean Timber definitely is a super I'm going to play. So if I'm going to play Korean Timber, I'm going to play Bake with him. So I went back and changed out Chevalier, ran Bake with Korean Timber, and ended up having a good lineup. But the changes every week. It's basically like, a, is this matchup good? And I have different ideas based on the week. So, so I'm circling back to what you said. And then we can get talking about your plans as well and like what you've done. But I really generally think out my plan before I enact it. So like once I enact it, I'm pretty good running the course of that plan because I'm pretty comfortable that the plan I devised was a good plan that I want to go down that path. Yeah, I do think there is some of that of the the pre card acquisition planning is not as significant for a lot of people. It's just like, oh, there's a card I want and they get it. And then it's like, okay, what can I do around that card? And then you can develop a strategy, good or bad, whether you're stacking more guys from that or you're just like, this is a one off or whatever your idea is. And I think that there is, there is enough of a gap, not a gap, but I feel like if people don't consider the, the time before they buy cards as like trying to see if your strategy is working mostly because they don't think, they don't think should this strategy work? I feel like it comes down to more like, this is my strategy. It seems like it should be fine. And then there's no like actual, there's no downside um, expectation. It's just like, oh, this is a strategy and this is why it'll work. And if it doesn't work, then you just move on. But I don't know where I'm going with that. I had a thought and now it just just left. Uh, so Alex just asked a really good question I think plays into it too. And, and you'll have more of these probably than me. But oh. Alex just asked, what is your best failed strategy? For me, the answer is very simple. I went into last season. I changed my strategy from the season before to last season to incorporate more IX players and more IX related things. So my plan was last season was I was going to buy daily blend super rare and do on Tadich rare and then timber rare. So timber, I could put into U23 uh, game modes and then Tadich I could run in gas or challenger three, whatever. And daily blend would almost always be a great idea. So I think I paid like a stupid amount for daily blend super rare. Let me see how much I paid. It had to be, it had to be a dumb, dumb amount that I paid for uh, daily blend super rare. Um, I can't even find what, how much I paid for it, but so let's see if I go into this, I probably pay, I paid, guess how much I paid Larry, but if you haven't looked. It sounded like you were about to say three ETH, so I'm going to guess that. You are correct. I paid over three ETH for a daily blend super. I think that is the most expensive card I have bought that wasn't a unique. I'm trying to think if there's been a... I don't think there has been a... I paid 2.7 for Artiguler. Does it make you feel any better that you are not the highest super rare purchase daily blend buyer ever? No, because I wish if I if I bought them earlier and paid more, I would have had a lot more returns. But I actually... I did actually... Funny story. I did win a tier zero with him, I think. It was club, maybe not tier zero, but could have been a tier zero. But I finished fifth in All-Star Rare Pro and got Ricky Puig out of it but anyways yeah i paid three ETH for it and just blew up in my face because manager was a moron took a while for him to get fired for being a moron they were like adamant like we aren't no matter how stupid he is we're not firing him and they like stuck with that for like yeah months did, did they like i feel like it was just timing the, like the timing was actually the bad thing like the bad luck in that and in that you bought it and then like almost like immediately yes. they benched him, right? Yeah. I mean, I bought him. Let's see when I bought him. Basically. I remember how excited you were when he was going to Bayern and you were like, I realized this, you were like, I think you got, I mean, I don't even know how anyone would not re respond this way, but you were like, if he plays, that's like an absolute smash spot. And, yeah. but he just didn't play, but it's also like, you're not going to sell low on no. that. To, so like, yeah, it was a tough I one. thought, I thought at Bayern I was going to get games. Not not like all the games, right? But I figured there would be like a week, like, oh, a weekend where they played like the worst team in the Bundesliga and they're like, daily blend's going to start. And I'd be like, 
easy hundred money. Cause like yeah. what people, people underestimate that type of stuff, right? Like if you get a guy that maybe isn't a permanent starter, but you know, when he's going to start and you actually get games from like, look, we all want to play everyone 50 times a year and just get them like nineties from them every single week. Right. Uh, but you, you want like that guy. It's, not everyone's going to get that. If I get Daly Blinn, like let's say he went to Bayern and was at Bayern for let's say 30 games. He started one. And I do think we knew that start. I'm pretty sure we knew when he was going to start, but like pretend that you, that you get like eight starts out of, out of him in 30 games, right? If you get eight guaranteed starts out of Daily Blend in 30 games of Bayern that you know about, that's a great card to have, even though a lot sure. of it's not worth what it was at Ajax, but like still a really serviceable and viable card. But unfortunately, that's not how things played out. Uh, he ended up just not getting any run. Because I thought like, when he signed at Bayern, they had very little depth. And they had like very little options that it looked like they were going to play because it was before they brought in Cancelo, I think. It it definitely was. Was uh, Davies hurt still? I can't Davies remember. was hurt. Yeah, it was before Cancelo. Um, Masrawi was hurt. Who who was like the third? Uh, Pavard got hurt. Like they Hernandez. had no one. They had no one defensively, and it was like, all right, he could get some games here. Um, right. But and anyway, Hernandez. It was that Hernandez. Was hurt, right? What? Didn't they buy him because Hernandez got hurt at the World Cup? They bought him because Hernandez got hurt. Hernandez was hurt. Davies was hurt. And it was pretty much like, look, Blinn can play left back or or LCB because it looked like they wanted to play a back five too. Um, I, I do remember some people thinking that maybe he could like sneak his way into the midfield next to Kimmich. And it was like the the hope on Daley Blinn going to Bayern was, was massive. Well, to be fair, I would take this over like most other options. If you gave me that again, I would still take it, right? Like I would probably, if you sign me up for him to go to Bayern or you're like, he's going to go to like, go ahead Eagles. I'm probably going to take Bayern and be like, I hope I get like eight games out of him that I know about. Wasn't, wasn't there a Eredivisie move that he possibly had? Antwerp was the rumor. That's right. That's right. But and everyone and, was like, and, well, and it's not there. bad, but like, it's fine. And yeah. then the Byron thing happened. Everyone was like, whoa, this is big. I figured you were going to get, I figured you were going to get six months at Byron where he would spot start. And then you would get a move somewhere where he'd be a starter. again. So I was like, it's not the end of the world. And then just, dude, he didn't spot start. He didn't, didn't play at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. KB9 Good was point. saying, excuse me, KB97 said blended Byron could never be blended. Ix anyway, blended Ix is pretty peak. Like, yeah. I think it's okay though if you went from like the best possible situation to like the second best. Like, had he played regularly at Bayern, I'm not sure there are many better places to be. No, with Ajax no. not being a possibility. Oh, well, and also like, let's say he was a he was like a 65 average defender at Ajax. Let's pretend he turned into a 60 average defender at Bayern. That's not even like a downgrade per se, because like. A 60 average camp defender yeah, compared to chance, 65 yeah. average challenger defender is pretty similar. Yeah. I would say. For sure. Like, yeah. We we all would take that. Uh, I was looking at my gallery only because I feel like the, the bad strategy that I... What was the actual question? What's your best failed strategy? Which I read that as like best failed strategy makes it sound like a failed strategy that happened to work. But I just take that as like, what was the worst thing you did? My problem was that there were too many times where I bought super rares of guys who I was like, this guy's good. I'll buy him because I need good super rares. And they really just didn't make sense with the rest of my gallery. It's more like, yeah, I'll just play that guy in rare pro when he has a good line, when he has a good matchup and like, that's it. And the number of guys I have like that are just like legitimately killers. Yeah. Like I bought Fernando Goriaran when like when he went to Tigres and I was like, oh, I got some Mexico cards. Sure. And like I had nobody else from Tigres and he was terrible. He's been awful. Enzo Capetti's another one I bought before the season. And I was like, oh, he'll MLS like is a super rare forward. I'll use him. But like I had nobody else from Charlotte. And like didn't really make sense having a super rare forward when I don't even play all star super rare much like that one just didn't make sense and i just have like others that like um takashi usami who is a personal favorite of both of ours i believe you have is unique 
Um, and I was like, oh, he's like a guy in Japan. Like I wasn't playing Asia, but I bought him and I was like, oh, I'll just play him an all-star. And it just felt like I have too many of those where I'm just like, oh, that guy could be good. I'll buy him. And then here I am with him that, and they're not, I'm not using these guys either. Here's the thing though, with, with your cards, I think you'll probably agree with this. I don't remember you making a big purchase that was bad at the time. Everything you have bought that has been like a more expensive purchase for you has made quite a bit of sense. And then you just got screwed and they just were terrible. But like every, every, every single time where you bought like a super rare, I would say that like a, I wish I could like see how much you spent on them. Like easily. Like I just don't think that you you can guys that were terrible. That were like bad ideas. Like, well, let me like this. let's see what like Paulo Diaz was not bad. You it took you too long to, to activate the Paulo Diaz move, which which we know, right? Well, then you you Lube don't, wasn't you bad. don't know what anything looks like in uh in dollars. Let me change this. Yeah, that's true. Oops. I don't. I need to see it because I can remember how much ETH stuff was when you right. bought it too. Right? Yeah. No, I get that. Like I know Korean Timber was like expensive ETH. So let's let's see let's see how this pops up. But like so like yeah like all right big lubes when you bought big lubes it was lubes almost the same price as Lee Handbum like it was about 0.45. Both of those were good buys when you bought them and they're fine. Paulo Diaz when you bought them made a lot of sense for your gallery. He just just turned terrible. Quinones when you bought him was a good buy made sense. I don't know about S. Chow when you bought him whether or not it made sense. He didn't even start. Same with Jansen. Gary Yaldi, I remember when you made the Gary Yaldi buy, it made a lot of sense. Osmar made a lot of sense when you bought him. Um, Rakitsky, you killed him so bad. Um, no, I, I, I had that Rakitsky card. Like I, my Rakitsky cards are back when he actually played. So like I'm not. Yeah, that's I, I, I mean, will take no blame for what happened to Rakitsky. Rusnak worked really well for a while. That was a great card for a. I think mean, that's maybe the single best purchase I have on the platform. Probably. And the funny thing is, it's turned uh, horrendous too. Sebastian Coates made a lot of sense when you buy it. So like, I would say that most of the time when you have actually bought a card or like, like Castro Montez, when you bought Castro Montez made a load of sense and then just horrendous. Man, that, that was yeah. one of the, like the most Copetti. frustrating. Buys like Copetti, ever. like when you won Copetti, horrendous. Like he's just been terrible. Um, so I, I don't know. Like, I think the uh, Ayuma Seco, another one, when you bought Seco, it made a lot of sense and just hasn't quite panned out for you. So like, I wouldn't even say like your strategy when you bought stuff has been that terrible. It's just sort of been most of the, most of like the performance after you bought stuff has just been unfortunate. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you say that. Cause I feel like I would sound like I'm somebody who's just making it stuff up. If I'm like, Oh, I've just been unlucky. But I mean, you literally buy a Maxim and just get hit by a freaking earthquake. Yeah, my favorite is that I doubled down and got another one for a tenth of the price of what I paid for the first sure. one. Sure. I mean, if he plays, he's really good. Joris Von Overeem, when you got that, that was a bad idea. <laughs> that was terrible. That one made no sense, but I mean, I was happy for it. It's not that it didn't make no sense. And shout out to this guy who sold it to me and didn't stop me from doing it. But I was, I think I had a Utrecht, I had another Utrecht Super Rare. Mark Vander Vander Marl, Mike Mike Vander Mike something. No, it's not him. I don't remember what his name is. He's gone anyway. And uh, now Overeem is in Israel. Here's here's the thing. When you bought Van Overeem, I think the game had shifted to where you shouldn't have been buying a card like that as much. I think that's fair. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop anyone from buying a card they think that makes sense for them. Like. That's actually not the worst card I've ever bought from you, which is amazing. Because yeah, it's actually is a hilarious now. story. Did you see that Kim Minte is um, got moved to Shonan Bel- Belmare? Really? Yeah, he, he just took a he took a transfer. I think I saw it in Matt Fiamma's Discord today. Let's go. Yeah. So he's I I, don't, I have no idea where he's been because like I mean the last like eight appearances he got a red card so. Yeah, you need point, point 0.17 for that card. Yep. Mm-hmm. When did you buy it? When did you buy it? I mean, it was like one of the first, but it was at April 2021. Yeah. So that's game so, week. I have no idea. 
April 2021. I mean, it was good for me when you bought them. I probably bought them right here. 16, what is that? Game week 158, let's call it. So right here. Yeah. yeah. Solid purchase, really. Man. I mean, I bought Jonathan, it already. Jonathan straight from Israel, by the way. <laughs> He's so overrated. And one of the worst players I've seen playing from Maccabee Tel Aviv. <laughs> I mean, yeah, not uh, not a great look for 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 him, per se. Mm. Yeah, Mike Bass is that there's no let's go if he's gone to Belmar. They they can see three. Do I watch that game? I mean, look at this. Oh. What do you mean there's no let's go? This is his last forty. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I can't argue with that. But I watched this their game against Marinos on the weekend. Marinos played horrible and put up four. Like literally, Elber fell down like five times inside. Like he got sent in on a one v one like five times and just fell down. <laughs> like Elber literally just slipped and fell like over and over again in that game. Uh, they could have easily scored like eight, but it's the way they play. They play such a high pressing style, and then they just get just shredded from by it. He probably will have some more red cards in his future. To be fair, at least you still have the card. That's impressive enough. I mean, I can't get rid of it. <laughs> I still the, the worst the worst buy I think I ever did was Tim Tae Juan for Sue Juan Blue Wings. I have one too. You have the super rare. Yeah, that I don't have. I paid one and a half ETH for it because that that it was pure boom. It was pure boom, and there was absolutely no U twenty three defenders that look any decent at all when I bought them. Yeah, click on the super rares layer. I'll yeah, I'm saying like I'm I'm. Oh, yours is a pretty there. terrible purchase too. Yeah, sure is. Yeah, that's me. Oof. That's me. Maybe Fiat will help you. I was actually so. Here's another funny story. Poor, poor Nepenthes, who isn't here today. But um, so this person, and you're going to agree with this comp. So I'm going to ask you who you think the comp would be, and I think you'll get it right if you can if you can think of like my gallery who I would comp them to. So there was a player that both. That a couple people won, like Professor Techers was one of them, and they were talking about him in a Discord, and they're like, "This guy's exciting." I'm like, "That's like the worst card you'd have. Sell it immediately." And uh, Nepenthes has the the uber peak buy of this player, and I just like he's like a card that has absolutely no ceiling. So, anyways, this is my comp for the player, and this player's in the MLS. Let's see if you can guess who the player is. Million Manhoth is the comp. Is it 04? Huh? Is it... Oh, no, no, no. It's not. It's not. No. Think of a million Manhoff and like what he does, like what a comp for a million Manhoff would be. Um, that's not like somebody that I track. So, okay. So uh, here, here's a Mo- million Manhoff. He is a defender that just plays winger and just bombs forward. Yeah. It's not uh, Chinozo 04. No, because he just is like a he just plays as a striker and just is listed as a defender. This guy plays as like a wing back or like a winger. Oh four, but anyway, so is it Hakimi? No, but I mean it's similar. That. So, anyways, the player is Caleb Wiley. Oh, I wouldn't have ever gotten there. Yeah. So, anyways, Although, so uh, Mike Bassin took his teammate Brooks Lennon. Brooks Lennon's actually good, and the reason Brooks Lennon's good is because Brooks Lennon takes like all sets. So, anyways, yeah. go look at like when Tecker's like bought him or won him. I'm like, I think like football coops won him, and I'm just like, this guy should be out of your gallery immediately because they they won him or bought him after the seventy three. And I think go go look at the buys and see, uh, or go look at the sells. I think I think coops bought it and sold it within like two days because I was like you need to sell that card immediately. And I was looking at, I, I had totally forgot about him. And I was like, Brandon Bai is actually a good guess. Sopsy guess Brandon Bai. That's actually a good guess. Because Brandon Bai is pretty, pretty similar, I would say. Um, so Techers is going to be, yeah, there's Nepenthes with the death buy, point two. Um, I think Techers sold at point, death like, buy. <laughs> point one. I'm deaf. He bought him at like uber peak for a guy that just had no chance There's to Coops. win. But uh, yeah, Coops, I, Coops, you see when he bought it though, it was probably like within a week or two. Yeah. yeah. So literally, what was it like a week or two? So he yeah, bought one, that one card. week. Yeah. He bought that card. I'm like, get that card out of your gallery immediately. And so I completely forgot about him until yesterday when I was watching the Atlanta Philly game. 
Does he not? <laughs> I was like, I wonder how bad this dude's been uh, since I told him that. <laughs> the 73 was when I told him that. I'm like, oh, yeah, he hasn't cracked 40 in five months. I'm like, that's, yeah, that's I mean, He's coming off his, that. like, best day game of the season. It was. That's that's how bad he is, though. Like, there's nothing against him as a player. He's a solid player. He just plays wingback. Dude just loses the ball so often, and he's just not good enough offensively. Uh, it actually, so funny story in Port Nepenthe. Apologize if you're listening. Uh, Haber says that Nepenthe has the death by on a few cards. There's a couple cards where I look at that I'm like, not even that, like, Wiley's a terrible card from a server perspective. Like, I want, that card's like not even worth what it is right now. And it's like 0.04 or whatever. But I, a few times I've seen, like, I wonder who bought the peak price on a card and it has been Nepenthe. I think there's a little bit of hindsight in those though, like being the peak guy to buy a Kimmich limited, like I, that's more, that's a, that's unlucky in terms of like what happened in the market. Like yeah. buying Kimmich's not bad. Correct. Buying Caleb Wiley is probably bad though. Yeah. Paying point so, two like, for Caleb Wiley was, I mean, that was like when that point two for Caleb Wiley, that probably made him like a top five MLS defender. I would guess. Price wise? Yeah. Yeah, probably. And it was just like this guy just can't be good unless significant things change on the platform. Like it's just there's nothing against him. I think he's a pretty good player. It's just uh there's just really no shot for him to be any good because of what type of player he is. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. And I mean that's something that goes into just your own research of like knowing Correct. what types of players don't fit the matrix. Correct. But like he is a poster boy of like the types of players that don't don't work on the matrix. And like, if you think like, oh, maybe he turns into TAA, he's not going to turn into TAA. Yeah, TAA is actually my most painful mistake in terms of what card I wanted, and then just didn't pull the trigger. And then his price shot up to like eighteen ETH, and then he's now like just so good. I mean, the price is but down. You'll, no, it's not up you'll again. never, you'll never be the peak price on TAA. Just no. so you know that. No, I won't. I won't be the... Uh, I, I won't be. That is true. I, I don't think I could ever be anywhere. I don't think I could be within like 50% of the peak price. AJ has set the peak price. To be fair, I will say when he bought it, I thought his price should have been five. Not, not seven and a half and eight. But like it should have been like five or six. Because when he bought it with the info we had from a matrix change standpoint, it was like, it was a really good card to have. And then it just like, but I, I wouldn't have paid seven and a half, eight. I would have paid like five. Time for different though, Laird. That was a year ago. Time for, time for different. Like I was, I paid, I paid 3.2 for Tadish back then. Then? I feel like you've had Tadish longer than that. No, I bought Tadish last summer. Go look. When was it? Uh, that was end of July last year. That might have even been before I got Tadish. I mean, what did you say? You spent three and a half? I uh, three point two. Oh. Three point two. Oh, there's Gator guy. He definitely bought way after me. So I must have done it in June. Actually, I might have bought in I bought it after the season. I bought it on the twenty sixth of June. So twenty sixth cool. of June last year is when I bought Tadich. Yeah. There you go. Oh, look at that. There you go. Well, like really no difference in terms of like I paid 3.2 for Tadich and Trent was like, so, I mean, Tadich is now what, what, half? No, he's back up. Tadich is back up. He was quite a bit lower. He was quite a bit lower. Yeah, I mean, well, this was this was July 26, not June. It was a month later. Yeah, yeah, it was a little. So was, like, But I'm just saying like Tadich a month later was like 2.2. Oh, actually, that's. No, yeah. I stand corrected. You're yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. He went up. He, he, because that was like the two months before the season push. And then things obviously started to tail off a little bit. Yep. Yeah. But that's what the Gator guy just mentioned. He's like, yeah, you've won a lot more. And that's true. Like, I've won a lot more with Haddish than 3.2, which makes it a decent buy. But like, yeah. that's oh, yeah. like, you're, if you're, if you're going to buy a guy like that, like you got to make sure that you're going to return off of them or there's just no point to buy it. Right. Right. 
Like you, you got to make sure that happens. It's tough to return 15 ETH worth of rewards from two rare cards though. Yeah. I mean, if I was, if I bought, that's what I thought. I thought Trent Alexander Arnold at that point was worth like five. Cause I thought you could realistically return like 20 ETH off him in the season. And I mean, I think you probably could have. The issue is he had some just really bad times. But here, sort of by sort of by league, and just look at last year. How do you do in the league last year? Like were most of his bad games in Champs League. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was really good again at the end of the year. That was better than I thought. I, I thought he only got hot like right at the end of the year, but no, he was no, really it was good. Long, yeah, it was longer than that. He was really good after the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Even before, like you just have so many hundreds in, in his game logs and stuff. Like that's yeah. just really good. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, he was like the when they announced the scoring changes and they were like, yeah, this really helps like attacking fullbacks. Yeah. Like he's the immediate one that you think of. And so yeah. of course his price is going to go up. Well, I mean, and to be fair, most of the guys that you would have thought of, right, were really good and, and were did improve. Like Trippier, Max Wittick, him, Blind would have had Blind not died. Um so it was definitely like there was there was some logic behind that. Yeah. Were there oh there weren't uh limiteds of Liverpool back then. That's why. So Rass will just ask, and I think it's valid based on where we're at currently, is what are the thoughts on some user strategy of planning to buy full stacks for collection bonus plus season bonus off the new or the new auctions? I think there's some merit to what people are doing. The issue for me is just like you got to really want all the cards you're getting. Otherwise, like, yeah, you add a percent here and there, but like usually one or two percent is not going to be the end, the end of difference in things. Like it might be, it might be. So there's merit to it. Right. But the issue is like, typically like, let's say my lineup is like two and a half points worse. Usually that's not going to be that impactful. The only way that it matters is like, if that is a difference between positions in the top five, Right. Because like if, if it's a difference between like 20th and 21st, it doesn't really matter. Like you're losing like 0.001 ETH on it. So it's like not a big difference. Your issue is that if you're losing like first and getting third because of it, well, that's like that could be like ETH, ETH and a half. And therefore your whole collection made sense on it. So there's definitely some some merit to, to the whole situation. Yeah, um, I was going to say something on that. Just like I think people look at it as like, oh, if it's the difference between a tier two and a tier one. Like that's a big difference, but like the bottom of tier one and the top of tier two is not that big. Like it could Correct. be the same as like the first in tier two and the second in tier two. Correct. And so it's kind of like, I agree with you that it's more on the, the upper, upper spots because the top five values tend to be very different in terms Correct. of like the gap between them. Whereas once you start getting down in the pools. To me too, right. Is like, the only cards I care about having a good bonus are guys that are in key lineups every single season, every sure. single game. Like, so I have I, I have Tadich, which we just talked about. We just talked about Tadich. My Tadich is in a uh, in a collection that has a three percent bonus, so that's pretty damn good. The issue is like let's use <laughs> because of that special edition. Uh... Daily Blend, you have and Bert and Berghaus. I have Berghaus and Daily Blend. Um, but so here's the thing, right? Is like, do I really care? Like, for me to get to to be for me to get to seven or to five percent, I need to add like Jay Gorder, Onana, Timber from that year, Maz Rowley from that year, Wrench from that year, Lissandro Martinez from that year, a bunch of other cards from that year. Like, yeah, you could go add like a a Zakari Labiad. And it will like be way cheaper, right? Like I could go do stuff like that, or like add a Victor Jensen or any of these guys that I don't care about. Is spending 0.5 ETH, let's say it cost me 0.5 ETH, is that worth 2% on these cards? Probably not. For me to retain for me to make up that much, I it probably isn't worth it, but it could be. It could be. That's the thing. Is you just really can't do that. Uh to begin with. So like I look at cards I really, really care about and it's like PSG cards, messy. Do I really want to, or Mbappe, do I really want to sit there and buy like, that's a tough one. Hakimi and all these other guys that are going to cost me like two ETH just to get Mbappe up 2%. I don't know. Probably not. Um, but it is, it is definitely 
something you have to consider because it is minimal amounts. Like I could get to three. I think getting to like three is worthwhile, but getting to like five is less worthwhile. However, again, if you jam all your guys in the same season, right. And it gets like Mbappe an extra percent, Neymar an extra percent, Messi an extra percent might be worth it. So like, for example, like I have a Donnarumma, maybe it makes sense for me to go try to trade my Donnarumma in to get this season's Donnarumma to help Messi, Neymar and Mbappe. Or maybe it makes sense for me to go buy some of the cheaper options on this team to, to help that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think if you have Donnarumma and you have these three cards, it's silly not to trade it. It's, yeah, but I got to get to 2%. So then I got to go buy a few other guys. And it does definitely make some sense. But like getting to five, to go from three to five, that's like you got to buy like 15 cards. For me to get so, from 1% to 3%, I don't have to do as much of that. I think 3% is the obtainable level that make, makes it justifiable in terms of buying the extra cards. The jump from 3 to 4 is huge. Yes. And I think that's ultimately the problem like that I've come across for my own cards is like I've bought a bunch and I've gotten them to 3% or 2% and then... 90 days, I'll get some to three. But I yeah. basically have to like double the number of cards I buy. Right. I've bought to, from, to move from three to four. And then you have to buy like basically the entire team to get to five. And yeah. so you, I think that there are going to be enough lineups and enough, enough cards with collection bonuses up to 3% that you're actually going to be at a disadvantage. But I wonder you, how much, realistically, how much the advantage is if your cards go from three to 5%. Yeah. Because it it really only pays off. Not that it only pays off, but like if it's only one card in your gallery, in, in your lineup that is getting the 5%, then like if you have, let's say it's Mbappe, Neymar's gone, Messi's in Champion America anyway, but like buying all of these cards for you to get to Mbappe to get 5% doesn't make sense. But if you're, going to play five player stacks from teams yeah. and they all have 5%, that's when it starts to make sense. Well, or like, like this, like Neymar, Messi, and Bappe are three guys that are very frequently going to be in major lineups for me. So bumping them up percentages is good, right? So like the thing is, is I guess it comes down to like two, like if you don't buy new season, if your plan isn't new season, right? Can we go back to that page you were just on? If you don't buy new season cards, let's just real hypothetically say you're not going to get a max of one owner card because I can't, like, that's not possible with these cards. Uh, you're not going to get a special because, again, the, the premium on specials is hard. You can't really get a serial number or a jersey number because it's just you're going to spend a lot. So there, there are no special cards in this collection anyway. Which makes sense. So for me to get this collection up, to 3%, I need to get to 250 points. So I need to get 190 more than what I have. I got to buy 10 cards to get there. So like, if you look at, let's quickly scroll. So like Sergio Rico, 0.03, yeah, uh, Letelier, 0 0.02, so 0.06. Like Bernat's 0.02. You're at, so that's, that's 0.08. Point mm. oh nine point. Actually, you know what? The, uh, this might actually have. I was gonna say I can't remember if this floor price is actually for that car like this. Sure. Be, let me just double check. Yeah, like there are actually no Dag uh, Colin Dagba cards from this collection on the market anyway. Yeah. So it's just it's just a. Uh... For me to do it, I gotta buy 10 cards. If I buy 10 cards of 10 cheapest guys in this team, like you're still gonna spend 0. 0.4, 0. 0.5 ETH. That's not cheap. But but it does give you an advantage every single week. So it's it's something you gotta you gotta uh, think about. Um so I, I maybe I'll go do that. Maybe I'll go move my Donna Room around, maybe I'll go do some of these other moves within this gallery to, to do stuff it really works a lot better. Like if you actually want cards and it's a lot easier if you start it before the season starts or you figure it out like now, because then you can buy off auction. If you buy off auction, you get the new card bonus, which is the max of one owner, which doubles your 20 to 40. 
And then, like, I mean, I'm not saying you should ever realistically get, like, a special a one or a jersey number because the premium on those is so expensive. But, like, you can buy guys that are um, within the limits, and you can get the 40% on some of them that are pretty valuable. Yeah, so <clears throat> there are a couple co or comments in the chat. One of them I want to go back to from Rasko Masaki says prices are going to be insane, especially the one of a hundreds, meaning for next season's cards. And you're also going to miss a portion of the season once the cards have come out. Cause obviously we know that the new season cards don't come out before the season start. They're always after. <clears throat> so Nep has been talking about this on all of his streams. This is his fine Nord stack that he's trying to build. And he's basically attacking all of the auctions and <clears throat> I was actually, he was talking about this Trowner one. He must've, won that auction. Yeah, if you're buying anyway. if you're buying auctions on these cards, right? It's a lot more feasible to get there. Yep. So but like he is as far as I know is planning on playing these cards like in a lineup. Like he's not doing all of this so he can get 5% on his buy low card or whenever or right. his uh Sismansky or Kirchu and because he's gone already. So it's like that stuff I get. The other one I wanted to uh point out was germ which really I think this is what a lot of people don't necessarily pick up is even if in a full lineup, the maximum benefit you can get from just collection score is 25 points. Correct. So it's 5%. And that requires you to have five 100s in your lineup. Correct. <laughs> and so realistically, you're not getting 25 extra points by spending all of this money. And it's just a matter of like, not that you need that much of a jump to like move up in the place. I mean, there are literally like hundreds of spots in like all-star rare that are separated by, you know, 10 points, but you need to be able to justify whatever the, bu the buy is that you think that that will pay off for the 5% that you're going to get. So Johanathan says that if someone buys all the one of 100s from a team or one of X's from a team, he can get to 15 pretty easily. Yeah, the, the issue is he gets 15 easily, but he will never, ever recuperate what it costs him to get that that effectively, right? Like it's he's almost never going to – because the one of X is always so priced up in comparison to other variations of the card that he's almost never, ever going to recoup the – expenditure he had to put in there particularly now that like there's so many people like the the one of and jerseyman premiums will never like have never been higher yes never i actually i literally it's funny we talk about this so as you know i have the kimmick jersey mint from this season and i was talking to bellama because he cares about the collection scores more than i do and I was like, I wonder what the premium on this would be. I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it because I'm like, I don't really care to sell it. But I'm like, I wonder what the premium would be on this card right now because. Which like, card? Sorry. Kimmick Jersey Man. Oh, right. Yeah. Like this season's Kimmick Jersey Man. I'm like, I don't know what the, the, the premium would be on it, but it would be, it would be interesting to know because someone's definitely got to want to pay a decent chunk for that card. Um, Ron Romero said, I think it's key for Sober to make sure newcomers avoid bad strategies as much as possible. I disagree with this very much. Uh, it's key for Sober to make sure their platform is understood by people coming in. But whatever strategies people want to use are viable. If people want to just collect a certain team, they can go do that. If they want to do... People are always going to do things that are suboptimal for the most part. Most people are not out there trying to just optimally buy things. I think Nep said it perfectly last week. Perfectly. If we all wanted to be optimal on this game, we'd all be traders. And that's the truth. Like, if we really want to make the most ROI and be as optimal as possible, we'd be traders. We wouldn't be sitting there trying to make lineups. We would be sitting there being Pavel Trader, who's probably made more money on this platform than everyone else. So that, like, it's just the truth. So it, the, the key for sober isn't to make sure newcomers avoid bad strategies. Everyone's stubborn and everyone makes bad strategies. However, counterpoint to that is most of the time stuff can work regardless of if your strategy is good or not. It's just in the long run, it will be less successful than a strategy that's a good strategy. And who's to say a certain strategy isn't a good strategy versus a bad strategy? A lot of the time, it's... it's a lot of the time, there's a gray area where like a strategy could be a good strategy or a bad strategy. 
but it's in the middle. It's it's not super. Like if you are going out there and you're buying 04 to run him in your lineup, that's a bad track. <laughs> but like most of the time, if Laird's like, oh, I really want to run a New York City FC stack, I think that's gonna pay off at some point. Cool, that makes sense. Like sure. So like it's just there's there's a lot of gray area in between strategies and like what makes sense and what doesn't. Yeah, I think the. I think we there are definitely very bad strategies. Like we know that. Like you're 04 and I'm gonna run that. But like the I think because of the longevity that the game allows, allows for, excuse me, that it's really tough to know if a strategy really is bad or it's just like not working. And so you can if you build a strategy, and I'll go back to like your Chicago Fire one from a few years ago that like the strategy of that one was it just needs to work once. And so when it's not working, everyone's like, see, it didn't work. And it's like, well, it's, it just hasn't worked yet. And there are a lot of strategies, like good strategies that I think are, are simply that, like it just hasn't worked yet and it should work at some point. But, and so it's really difficult, I think, to, for people to, to realize what is bad and what just hasn't worked out yet. And that's where I kind of want to, like, not that we can answer that easily today, but like, that's kind of re really what I wanted to go at was how often can a seemingly good strategy fail that'll make you think I should just give this up as opposed to you should just keep going. Yeah. Well, I think Rascal just drilled it on the head, right? If your strategy, if you're having fun and your strategy isn't awful, you should be doing all right. The key, in my in my opinion, and I know some people don't necessarily agree. Yeah, Scosmo ran a bottom stack and it somehow worked, and that's that strategy was horrendous, and it still worked. At some point, it was bad, but it worked. But why was it bad? Like, what about it made it bad? With because the strategy was, I'm going to stack all these guys, this team, this bad team together, and when it works out, it'll pay for itself. So, like, what's bad about that strategy? Because that team realistically couldn't pay off, even if it worked out. It, the, the week he won, it, it worked, right? But, like, he probably could have ran that 150 times. He probably did run it 150 times, and it worked once. And that's why it's a bad strategy. But this goes back to the point we're just talking about Graskel. If Scosmo's having fun running the Botcham stack, he that, he's successful, right? The Something people need to realize with So Rare is that it's – a fantasy game and it's a investment property and it's a whatever you want to make out of it, but it's about entertaining yourself. It's an entertainment form. I look at poker. Like if I spend 200 bucks and I'm entertained all night, like I try to talk about it with my parents, right? Like, so I, um, blue tomatoes said, what's the difference between a botchum and Chicago stack? Like that's I exactly what I was going to ask. I can tell you that I have returned more with just Alvaro Moran unique card than Scosmo had with this whole bottom stack and D ones combined. But that's that's not the point. No, it's not. But, the, but they're the same. They're not. It's not. But it is. Anyways, back to what I was just talking about. Anyways, anyways, <clears throat> my parents love to to gamble and love to play slots at the casino. Right? They love it, but they get a lot of entertainment out of it. My parents will go to Vegas like once a year and spend their $5,000 and get comped for like the whole week. So effectively, I'm basically like, you're just paying for a vacation. Like you're, you're paying for the vacation in the way of clicking buttons and playing slots, right? I am a very competitive person. I like to win. Like I like to win. I like to be, I like strategy and competing. Like those are like two things I like. So Sower is fun for me because I like to compete and win. And I can do that with Sower. Quinny loves Celtics since Quinny's here. Hello, Quinny. Quinny likes Celtic. So Quinny just gets to run all the Celtic stats and sit there. And he's so happy when he wins because he is just playing Celtic stats. Andy Black loves young boys, dicks, and cum, apparently. I mean, that's just, just calling it how we see it. And... He literally gets excitement every week looking at Fred Emmings and just seeing Fred Emmings a thousand times in his gallery. How many Fred Emmings does he have now? Is it like 300 now or something? It's over 100. Yeah. So like, <laughs> really curious where this is going. Though. That's like, but that's his, his strategy is I just want to collect Fred Emmings cards and he has fun with that. 
So, like, that's kind of what the key with things are, is that, like, it's all about you sort of being entertaining and having fun with yourself and being able to come up with whatever strategy you think will be enjoyable for yourself in the future. Like, that's sort of what the key with things are. And I just think that if people... Um, if people worry about coming up with a strategy that is good for them, then that's fine. Like your strategy is probably have my guys DNP so I can bitch about my lineups and that you get to you get to enjoy that like weekly with Paolo Diaz because that's just what he does. Right. He just sits and doesn't play. Is he going to play this week, by the way? Is he going to play in the midweek? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So like it's just about coming up with strategy and figure out what makes, what gives you entertainment and then go with it. I, I want to go back to this. Bochum, Bochum, Chicago thing. Because I, I literally, literally don't f- understand the difference between like what makes one good strategy and one bad without the fact that like your Madron card has returned a lot. Well, because Madron was actually a good card and the bot guys all just sucked. So it was really about the one card. Yes. Like buying a bad team stack that had one good player would have would basically makes well, it diff- makes a difference. It's a lot different competing with a bad team stack in America D one than a bottom stack in gas or in ch- champion D one. Okay, that I'll that I'll accept. So I'll, it's a I much that. it's a much different playing field. Like you're sitting there running this suboptimal lineup in a group that is just not doesn't really have like a great line that's going to just absolutely be fantastic. Whereas like Botchum, you're literally running them against like the best teams in the world type stacks. On yeah. Side. Okay. I'll, I'll take that. If, when, if you're, you buy a Chicago fire stack because you're competing against the new England revolution, as opposed to Bayern Munich. Correct. Okay. Okay. I like that. I yeah. just, we need, I need to walk through that because most of the Chicago oh, fire stack. Just like, yeah. Let me just stack two teams. Most of the Chicago fire stack was, is kind of a running joke, right? Because it was, but, but Madron is actually a really good card. Right. I mean, Shabilka was a decent card for a time. Yeah. But Shabilka yeah. wasn't part of the original Chicago fire stack. Oh, was he not? Oh, I didn't even realize that. Barrick. No, oh, that's right. That's right. It was Barrick. Right. Who, um, who is, is usable again in China. Yeah, he's in China, right? Yeah. Uh, let me see how much I've won off Robert Barrick. Yeah, like I've won uh, two ETH off Robert Barrick Super Rare. Thanks to Madron, sure. Uh, Bobby here said, like, I'm stacking my Houston team, but I'll probably not win as much with it. Like, you're not going to win Champion Europe with that. Yes. Correct. I Well, that's part of the thing I realized. I realized that the year before. All right, so we, and we talked about this like a month ago. First year I was on the platform was like I came on the platform in like April. So like I bought for the summer, which was America and Asia. And then I bought for the European season. That year in the European season, I bought a lot of gank guys and Bruges guys and lower end challenger Europe guys. Yep. And I was like, I'm going to buy them because uh, Bru- like- Bruges was upper end of challenger at that point. Sorry, upper 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 end, but not like the top. Like they weren't like IX, right? They were like oh, very good, but right. they weren't IX. Yep. So oh, right. they're like the 20. They were like the FC 20 of like this year, except for like different players, different levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, I was like, I think that I'm going to buy these gank guys or these Bruges guys or whoever. And I'm not going to pay three ETH for Jurian Timber. I'm going to spend one ETH on whoever. And I'm going to run this shit. The issue was, I realized at the end of the year, is like, yes, I spent one ETH on this guy and one three ETH, but if I had just spent three ETH on Timber, I would have returned 12 ETH. So it just made more sense for me to be like, all right, well, that worked. It worked because it did not work. It worked, but it would have worked better had I gone and got a couple cards. I'm not saying like full stacks, but I'm saying like there's key cards. Like if I had a Timber Rare the season before this, it would have done so much more for Mm -hmm. me than not having it because of what I was running instead. Same thing with like at forward, I was running like Junior Ito at forward instead of Tadich. If I just had Tadich, it would have went way further for me instead. Yeah, so buying the better cards would have been better? Yeah, correct. Okay, just yeah, just wanted to summarize that. But I won enough during that time frame that I was able to go buy those better cards if I did decide I wanted them. Right. 
Like I was able to, the strategy that I employed, I thought that strategy would be a, a good long-term strategy and bought purely on value. And then I realized that there was also, there was some love that needed to happen with my gallery in terms of like, there was a, I tried to go pure value and I realized that you needed some high end to tie in with that good value to make it work the best possible way. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you have a strategy that you think is good and it's not working, how long do you wait? So I would say you need to objectively look at things again, right? And you got to decide like what your plan was and why is it not working? If it's not working because you have an injury or something, or maybe they just had a, right? Like people get so reactionary. They make a move three games. Like say you have an FC 20 sack and they play PSV, Ajax, and Feyenoord three weeks in a row. No shit, they suck. And then you're going to have Camber, Go Ahead Eagles, Gronjan, whatever, the next three game weeks. I'm, I, I want to see how it runs. So like that's part of the problem. You got to objectively look at it and be like, why is this not working? So like I... I'll give the example actually sort of last year what I did and I don't think it worked, but it didn't fail either. But I, uh, I created a, um, a Freiburg stack and Ginter yeah, was really, yeah. really, really good to start the year. And then Ginter like tailed off a little bit, but I had Flecken, Ginter, Leinhardt and, uh, Grifo? Grifo. and I was just like, I think this is good enough to get the job done. Problem was I didn't have a forward and I just kept looking at it. I was like, I just don't have a forward, but I don't want to buy like Gregorich because he kind of just blows. Yeah. So I just kept running whoever at forward. And but it got to the point where like I finished a lot of the time, not a lot, but like a good amount of the time in Champion Europe D2. I had finished like 15th and get a T5 super rare, which is just like I'm like, what's the point of this plan? Right. You didn't do it for that. But I, so I sort of like, but here's the thing, right? And this is something else that I, I think that uh, Blue Tomatoes asked, does Grifo have a four card? No, he has a mid, but he's pretty solid. I wouldn't say he's great. He's a good card. So anyways, what I did is I reassessed my strategy as the season went along. And I sort of came up to the conclusion that it wasn't good enough and it didn't work good enough. But I also came up with the conclusion that like, I don't really have a better option to do right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to keep running this and then reassess it at a later date. So like, I kind of assessed that, that my plan was not good enough, but I also assessed that like, I really didn't have a good plan to sort of change around. Sure. And like, I'm not going to go sell. Like the thing is a lot of guys, like if you have a Ginter, right? Like I have a Ginter super. Rare, and my guess is Ginter super rare probably today is worth like 0.3 yeah, like 0.4 ETH probably-ish. I don't think it's worth selling Ginter at that because I've seen him put up like some monster games. At the beginning of last year, he was just, he ripped off like 60 plus for like 12 straight games. Yeah. That's that's a good card. And I don't really want to sell that for, for 0 0.4 ETH because maybe he comes in and has a good start to the season again. So like, I don't necessarily think you need to just fully go out and sell those cards, but you can also come up with an assessment and be like, yeah, it's not good enough, but what what can I do to make it better? Sometimes the answer is going to be you can't right now. You just have to run what you have, sort of get what you can out of it, um, and then and then go from there in the future and try to improve it uh, going forward. Yeah, I think pretty much what you said right at the beginning is is the most important part of the you need to review and find out why it's not working. Correct. And sometimes sometimes it's just bad luck, to be yeah. honest. Like sometimes it's like this lineup was really good and so-and-so had like an error that led to goal. And yeah. like those things are just kind of like wacky things that happen or like a, you know, a, an appropriate tackle that turned into a second yellow card and then it's a red and like that just ruins the lineup. But it's like the being able to look at your results and understand why they happened, where whether it's either this was bad or they shouldn't have done well. I bought these cards, you know, like you said, people are so reactionary. And so if there are certain teams that are doing really well and everyone's like, oh, I'm going to go buy that team. And it's like, well, they just played all their easy games. Yeah. And you just bought them and now they're going to play their harder games. And if it doesn't work, you need to recognize that like that's what happened. And yeah. not to say they won't have easier games later on, but they won't have the ones they just had. Correct. Until next season. Well, and people so, do that all the time too, right? Like, all I mean, the time. All the time. Here's a like, here's like a upcoming schedule 
for like Ajax. Like the beginning of the Ajax season is Heracles at home, who apparently got promoted again. I literally didn't know that. Excelsior, Fortuna Sittard, those are their first three games. So like hypothetically, Tadish is just going to rip off hundreds. Yep. Like, hypothetically say Tadish rips off 300s. And everyone's like, oh my God, you need to have a Tadish, yada, 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 yada. And then all of a sudden, the next games after that are 20 away. Feyenoord at home. Yep. But, so like he's probably going to suck. And then people are going to be like, man, he sucks. He's dust. I don't want Tadish anymore. And then he goes into Volendam at home. And Wall Wall Wick away. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just like, yeah, people, you got to really, you really got to put in the, the the effort to sort of see. Like, I'll ask you this question because I am curious what your answer is. Do you view your Paulo Diaz strategy as a failure? Um, I think I got a little unlucky. I think it was poorly timed. Yes. So I don't think it's necessarily bad strategy, but I think I just waited too long to implement it. Yes. And by the time I implemented it, well, he also got injured and whatnot. So like, I think it was good strategy that I just didn't, good strategy and bad timing, if that's possible. Yes. Like obviously yes. Strat- timing is part of strategy, but like, I think it was right. I mean, I had a Paolo Diaz rare, so that kind of like, like I was early on, not early, but like I was at least using some Paolo Diaz, but yes, I think it was good strategy, but bad timing. Yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty bad. Well, that's what I said. So, like, if I look at your Palo Diaz, right, and, like, I'm looking at it objectively. I'm like, I don't think I want to sell him if I'm you right now. I want to – I want him to get solidified in the lineup again and be able to run it consistently without having to worry about eating a DNP, right? Yeah, he, he like, won't be But, you, like, you, he's been terrible, and you've still returned, like, 0.7 ETH with him. Yeah. Or, like, 1.7 ETH. Like, you have returned, like, 1.7 ETH – for Paolo Diaz, and he's been horrendous, and your lineups it's, have been terrible. The the worst part of that card is that like when when I win, I win really good stuff, but I just don't win that often. Yeah, but it's just, it's just one of those things. Like it's it's tricky because um, Blue Tomatoes asked a good question. I think does buying one player count as a strategy? Yes. Yes. Like it, it is a strategy, but like that strategy could be done in a lot of ways with with one. Player. I think it, I think it's part of a strategy. Yeah, think, like you need to know what you're doing around that player, and that's the strategy around that player. So, like, I want to buy Tadic, and it's like, okay, what are you going to do around Tadic right. to make sure that you can return from whatever you're buying there? And like yeah. the whole thing is really the strategy. Typically, yeah, the best way I think I can talk about it with with that. I think it's an add-on to a strategy, right? It's like, whatever I want to do, this is the add-on to make to make more sense. So it's like, I have this great gas three line that just has a terrible forward. I want to buy Tadage. And so you go buy Tadage. And like, so yes, it's a strategy, but it's like, sort of like an add-on to the strategy. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, here's a funny story from Willie. Willie has, Willie, so I bought a Wilder Goes uh, card like do we know who that is i've literally yeah he's it. like the he's like the young center back for az who came in and was really good when he came in so yeah i'll let you go to it so click on his his so5 scores right all right so uh now scroll down and look at his line so what position do you think he is Laird? well i see that he's a center back yeah so what position do you think his card is? Oh, is it a forward? Nope. Oh. But it's a okay. mid. It's a mid. With zero games in his career played as a mid. So anyways. Uh, wait, some of no, he has are, mostly, mostly defender cards. It's, it started as, as a mid, though. So okay. anyways, anyways I, I, I really like him. I thought he played really well as a really young center back when he came in this year. I thought he was pretty damn good in all of his games. So I bought him. And like two weeks after I bought him, I wanted to play him. And I was like, where the hell is this guy at in the lineup builder? I was like, where is he? And I was like, this guy's, I literally spent 15 minutes trying to find out why my card wasn't showing up in the lineup builder to probably they sent where I'm like going to ask you, like, why is he not showing up in the lineup builders? And then I went to midfielders and he was sandwiched between like Sven Mijnans and, uh, and Reinders. And I'm like, why the fuck is this guy a midfielder? So anyways, bought the card. 
it took me like two weeks to realize it wasn't a midfielder. When I realized it was a midfielder, I was like, I don't need this card because he's a center back. I really don't want a center back midfield card. Um, and I was just you like, did this I, deal today. I, so I was like, I'm like, all right, I guess I'll sell it. So I actually tried to sell it twice because I wanted to sell it to buy the, the, the defender card because I actually want the defender card. I think it was going to be a pretty good card. Wow, that's actually a really good start to the season for AZ, huh? Look it's really, really good. I guess I guess that's good that I have so many AZ guys. Although they're they're all falling, they're falling away quickly. They're leaving. That's why I thought you bought them because you have you have a ton of AZ. I, guys. That's why I bought goes is I have like I at that time Bukama was out. Yeah. And I had Rinders Super, Mijnan Super, Pavlita Super, and I wanted to be able to run goes in a D2. And then he was a midfielder, so it didn't really work out that way. Uh, so, anyways, Willie came to me and wanted to buy the Wouter Ghost card. So I sold Willie the Wouter Ghost card, and I was like, I I literally told Willie in the message, I'm like, yeah, he was a midfield card, so like that kind of threw me off. And Willie's like, didn't didn't wasn't paying attention. <laughs> like three hours later, Willie's like, damn it, I just realized what you said. He was a midfielder. He's actually a midfielder card. He's like, I literally had no idea. Why would I even consider that? And I was like, that is a good question. I don't have the answer to. So I didn't even lose money on it. I literally sold it. Congrats on your sale. Yeah. For what I what I sold. I don't think it's a bad card. I think he can be fine as a mid. I just I have Rinders and I have Mijnans. If they are on A Z, like I'm gonna play those. I'm not gonna play this. I needed a defender for, for obvious reasons. But yeah. I thought he was pretty good. I thought he was really good. I thought he was better than Bukamo, honestly, this season. Like when he came in when everyone was hurt and it was like him and Hatsiakos, I thought he was pretty damn good. That's right. Scosmo said, bring in Sugawara. Um, or he said, get Sugawara out, give Cassius the spot. Um, I think they're bringing in Cassius to be like the the future for Sugawara and like the, uh, the, the backup for this season. And then they'll go back to uh, actually having a backup right back. Because like this season, they didn't have a backup right back. When Sugawara was injured, they had to play Hatsiakos there. The whole time, but yeah, uh, Tuggy mentions Bruno Martin's Indy, and he should be back this year and should be in based on the sale today of uh, of Bukama. Yep, yep, that is official. Um, all right, I think we've <clears throat> discussed the strategy stuff enough. How long we've oh, we have gone long. All right, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, again, for those who were here an hour early, sorry for that. Uh, I would say it won't happen again, but I think we all know it's bound to happen again. Hopefully not this week. So thank you everyone. If you could please, uh, like subscribe, all that good stuff. Make sure you watch all the videos. Oh, the other thing, if you have not already, uh, updated your story data mobile app, go do that. And while you're there, if you could please rate and review it. That's, uh, really helpful to get more people to see it. So Thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week.